Hi, I'm Leah Grace, and I'm the creator of the Webtoon Canvas comic, Beneath the Camphor Tree. I've been working on this comic for almost two years now, and so I've learned a few tricks on how to make the process of making comics easier and faster. Part one of this two-part series will be going over how I use 3D models to make Webtoon backgrounds, and then as part two in the second video, I'll be going over drawing characters within those background images with the help of assets such as brushes and 3D props. When I started my webtoon, I very quickly found out how time consuming it can be. Using 3D models for webtoon backgrounds not only saved me hours of time per episode, but also helped me save energy to keep making comics. Shortly after starting my comic in 2021, I found a webtoon resource website called Acon 3D that, no lie, has saved my butt when it comes to sustainably making webtoons. Which is why I was so excited when Acon 3D reached out to me and asked if I would collaborate with them on this video series. Acon 3D is a webtoon and drawing asset platform for artists around the world. It's already well known by the most global webtoon and webcomic creators, and there are tons of high quality premium assets that are hardly found on other websites. As you can see, they have a quite a variety of webtoon assets, both of 3D backgrounds and 2D assets and other 3D assets for all sorts of genres. I'm going to be going over my thought process for designing panels that utilize 3D backgrounds. First, I'll show you the 3D backgrounds I'm going to use in this video, and it'll be linked below if you're interested in checking it out. As you can see, it's a SketchUp model. I'll first be going over how I create storyboards or thumbnails for an episode with 3D models in mind in Clip Studio Paint EX. Then we'll switch over to SketchUp where I'll show you how to utilize that software with 3D backgrounds to create background images for my panels. Then I'll bring those images back into Clip Studio Paint where I'll edit them and get them ready to use in my episode. While storyboarding, I generally have an idea of the environment and angle that I want to place my characters and panels in. But the most important thing is to keep your thumbnails or your storyboards as loose and fast as possible. You don't want to waste time making great art here. It's just an indicator for what pose and angle, the general location that you're going to be developing further with backgrounds and character art. I'll be doing camera shots from different angles because in video 2 I'll be explaining how I match characters to various perspectives. Alright, so I'm in the SketchUp model. And as a side note, with SketchUp, a really cool thing that a lot of 3D models or 3D backgrounds that Acon 3D offers, a lot of them have interaction ability, like interaction qualities. So if you click tools, down, go down to interact, you can click parts if, if it turns yellow and there's a little click to activate, you know, noggle, you can click it and it'll like with things like doors and windows and see if I can find something else but anyway my point is it's pretty cool it means you don't have to finagle a lot of the stuff that you would hope you wouldn't have to finagle and it's a really useful I didn't actually know about that like the first little while that I was using SketchUp I just thought like oh if I wanted to open the door I've got to like manipulate the vertices and all that but actually no there's the whole interact tool so that's a pretty cool side note that uh, I wanted to share Alright, now you should be able to see the thumbnail or the storyboards as well. So we're going to do this first storyboard, this first panel, and I'm kind of imagining that she is sitting here, which means we're actually going to switch in the like sketch which side of the room she's sitting on. And that's the important thing about working with 3D models and why I do the 3D model, like do the image first and then draw the character within the scene. is so that if I want, you know, I'm in the 3D model, I found the angle that I want, I found the camera angle that I want and all that. It's so much, so much easier to just draw the character into the 3D model image than try to draw the character, put the 3D model image in, and then have to fix the character or redraw it, heaven forbid, to match the perspective and all that. So we're gonna, I think this is a good, I think like, I think like that, I like that. All right, so how I usually do things for inside the house, I don't really play too much with, you know, lighting, shadows, because 
SketchUp works with like sunlight from outside and it won't come through you know the walls because it's an enclosed space um, so I usually do like lighting uh, specific lighting things in uh, Clip Studio Paint so that I can but if you wanted to work on lighting you would just go to window default tray I want to say it is shadows so here let me see if I can bring it up here we go so we're going to activate shadows use sun for shading we're going to just yeah see it's really dark in here because it thinks this is like all one giant shadow um, and then it's the yeah and so we're just gonna leave it at that we're gonna go to file export 2d graphic and the important thing with 2d graphics is that and I'll tell you in a moment so The important thing with 3D graphics is you want it to be a portable network graphics or a PNG. And if you click options, you're going to want anti-alias clicked and you're going to want transparent background click. That's very important. Um, otherwise, if you have like, if you want to work with other backgrounds behind the 3D image that you take, you're going to have to cut out the white or whatever the background image is in the SketchUp file. It's a real pain. So make sure that you click options, click make sure transparent background is uh, selected. Make sure the image is big enough with the width and height of pixels and make sure it's a PNG. So I am just going to name this image one and we're going to click export. Okay, so I sped through the last one just because it was pretty much the same same kind of concept. Uh, we're going to do some outside shots now, which basically just means I'm going to show you some tips or at least what I do for, um, for utilizing SketchUp's internal lighting, you know, situation that they got going on. So this is a downward shot, so we're just going to angle it downwards. I'm going to add shading. Use sun for shading once it catches up. I'm going to make lighting dark. It's a little too dark. There you go. I like that. And I'm going to change, you can see up here, you can change you know what time zone it's in you can change what time of day it's in. I'm gonna make this kind of noon noon o'clock and that'll change what so again you want to click this button here which is show or hide shadows that's the toggle or the button for that and then you also want to click use sun for shading that just adds a little more natural lighting and again if you don't see the shadows panel you can go to window default tray shadows and make sure that's uh that's clicked on so okay i'm gonna go through now that i've shown you how to the basics of how to use sketchup lighting when you're outside and internal when you're you know out in the open i'm gonna go speed through and show you kind of sped up how i do the rest of the panels After I've exported the image from SketchUp, I'll import it into Clip Studio Paint and do any touch-ups necessary to polish the piece. This may include adding shadows, gradient maps, specifically for backgrounds. I'll hit link the handy ones I got from Acom3D down below, or other lighting and details. The important thing to remember here is it doesn't have to be perfect. We're making comic panels, not finished full illustrations. Each panel will only be viewed for a few seconds at a time, and so it's best not to waste too much time and effort trying to perfect everything. Conserve your energy for other things. Once you're finished, save the file as a Clip Studio Paint file. This is because we'll be using object files to insert these images into our panels.
The reason we say the finished background image is Eclipse Studio Paint file is because we'll be using object files to insert the image into the panels. If you're like me and often use background images from panel to panel, this is a great way to easily update the images without having to go in and individually fix each panel image that is used in various panels. An object file is a nested CSP file within another CSP file, such as your webtoon panel or your webtoon files. The best way to explain this is to show how it works. When my object file is within the panel, I've imported it into the panel, I can update the original CSP file that we made with the sketch up in, you know, image, and when saved, it'll update all instances of that file that are used. This is great for quickly changing or updating background images across different episodes, files, or panels. The only downside to this is if you accidentally save over the original file with a change you do not want to update in all panels or all instances that you've used it in, and you may because you may accidentally make a change that was unintended to some panels. To avoid this, I always use the save as function if I'm going to make a major change or make a change for some panels but not all panels to that original CSV object file. So again, the key to not accidentally make a change to a panel that you didn't want to make that change to is always if you're going to make a major change or change you know the background or the shading or the lighting use the save as function and save it as a whole new document and then reinsert that new document into the panel that you're trying to change to import an object file go to file import and then object file and select your file of choice I'll just speed through the different panels that still need to have an object file inserted into them so you can see my process. Usually I do, you know, one image at a time or go one panel at a time and so I can kind of see the flow as I'm going through the story. But yeah, this is basically my process for inserting background images into my panels. In the next video, I'll be going over how to draw characters within the panel so they match the perspective of the background images, as well as how to add embellishments such as using brushes or details to add to their clothing or to their designs, as well as how I use 3D props to help draw props faster and easier. So if that's something that interests you, please subscribe and stick around and don't forget to go check out Acom3D's website for really cool stuff.